we're going to look at the third major program for NASA. And this, of course, is the one that is centered about sending a person to walk on the surface of the moon. This program, you know, is the Apollo program. Right here we have the mission patch. Features the A for Apollo. Three stars, representing that there will be three crew members. And it's all about Earth to the moon. And, of course, back safely. The capsule has to be redesigned, or a new design, because you now are going to cram three humans into this uh, nose cone. At Kennedy Space Center, they had one that you could clamber into and see how jam-packed it really is. Here's a comparison of our Mercury one crew member capsule. The Gemini capsule for two, and now the Apollo, more pyramidy shape, for three crewmen. This right here is the capsule. Down here is the service module, and then it would rendezvous in space with the lunar module. So this little area right here is where the astronauts would be for blast off. Of course, it's going to require a much larger rocket than anything NASA's designed and built before, as you're going to be traveling one way, quarter million miles, so you're needing to uh, propel an enormous amount of mass, three people, two vehicles, and this configuration for launch is the housing right in here is where the lunar module would be. So it'd be a little bit folded up in here. And then the three astronauts would sit here for blast off. And then they'd have access to the service module during flight. The world's largest rocket is the Saturn V. And the five refers to the five main engines. They're F1 engines. And give you a sense of scale here, these are full grown adults. And the Saturn V, we use the Roman letter V for the five. And here you can see a couple of these Saturn Vs in the process of being built. Werner von Braun was the individual who developed the Saturn V. And here's my impression of Dr. von Braun. In this obviously scaled down model, you'll see here's your Mercury or Redstone rockets, your Atlas, the Gemini Titan. These we'll look at a little later, and then the significantly larger Saturn V, the world's largest rocket, still to this date, the world's largest rocket. Now we have Saturn 1s, Saturn 1Bs, because uh, we were going to have trial runs, practice runs, make sure the mechanisms work. So you didn't need to have the full monster uh, to have tests to see, okay, can you get into an orbit around Earth? Size comparison, the Saturn V compared to the Washington Monument in D.C. Now this over here is to scale, the Mercury, Gemini, Apollo capsules. And then over here, these rockets side by side are to scale. And if you were to throw in the space shuttle system, it would probably reach about a height here, so about this tall. So this thing is monstrous in size. We have in your notebooks page 49, I believe it is. Yep, 49. We have this uh, scale for you. You see the Mercury, Redstone, Gemini, Titan, Apollo, Saturn V. And of course, we'll get into the shuttle program later. But just a thing of extreme, just massive. Maybe more relatable to you is against uh, world-recognized monuments. The Statue of Liberty, Saturn V is taller. The Elizabethan Tower, taller than that and the Disney Magic Kingdom Cinderella's Castle. 
The vehicle had to be so large, as I said, you're trying to propel three individuals and the other spaceship, the lunar module, a quarter million miles. LOX is liquid oxygen. Just absolute immense power. The five F1 engines down here generate a power equivalent as if you strapped 500 uh, F-16s to the base of the Saturn V. Just tremendous amount of power generated by this fuel consumption. To put it in perspective, there's enough fuel in a full tank of a jumbo jet to drive an average car four times around the world. Now the Saturn V has enough fuel it's about 41 billion liters of fuel, if you were to equate it to, say, petrol in a car. If you had a vehicle that didn't need to be serviced, you know, change out the tires, lube oils and filters, and you had a driver that could stay awake and didn't need to eat, pee, or sleep, and you had the ability to drive on a road that went all the way around the earth, so lots of imagination going here, but that 41 billion liters of fuel, you could drive that car at about 60 miles per hour non-stop around the earth for 34 years. 41 billion liters of fuel for the Saturn V equivalent to a car drive about 60 miles per hour non-stop for 34 years. That is just an enormous amount of fuel as you see demonstrated here. So that many uh, truckloads of power, no, it's the gas consumption equivalent, it's, it's just a monstrous amount. Here's a graphic showing the amount of power generated compared to the Atlas, the Titan, and the Saturn V, just tremendous, tremendous. And the launches were just a thing to behold with this enormous plume. And we'll give you a little bit more detail into how the Saturn V uh, operated and propelled uh, humans to space. So the rocket performed in stages and is built in stages. And so you needed to stack this vehicle. These are cars. This, this thing is just mammoth. And so you have this building in which you can safely stack the various stages. And this building is known as the Vehicle Assembly Building, the VAB. Although originally more people referred to it as the Vertical Assembly Building, as you were stacking things one on top of the other. But then in the shuttle era, it became more known as the Vehicle Assembly Building. And this is in your Alphamix appendix, the VAB. Early on, the Vertical Assembly Building, now more often the Vehicle Assembly Building. Here's a look inside the Vehicle Assembly Building. This it just monstrosity, and that's just the lower first stage. Putting on another stack, another stage. And you see there's engineers in here. Of course, they'll leave before the stack is uh, blasted into space. Now the VAB itself required 65,000 cubic yards of concrete, 45,000 steel beams, a million steel bolts, a grand total of nearly 99,000 tons of steel. Which is not too hard to comprehend when you just see how massive this building is. Here's a truck right there. So looking at the different components of your Apollo vehicles, you had that massive rocket, but then tucked in there is your lunar module. You also have your CSM, the command service module. So sometimes I think of it C for capsules, C for the command service module. And that is in your Alpha Mix appendix. Then you have your LEM. Uh, sometimes LM, sometimes LEM, and that's your lunar excursion module, or some people would just say LEM, or meaning lunar module. Very early concept of the lunar module, just some wood and some binder clips, large paper clips opened up. 
and uh, move to more paper cardstock models as you uh, refine the design and notice these designs are happening in the early 60s nasa had very early on the guidance to get us to the moon here we see the pretty infamous drawing for those of us are fans of space exploration of Hobolt's uh, outline for how to best achieve the approach and landing on the moon we've shown you a few of these before of how this would happen an important thing to remember is the crew was comprised of three but it would only be two people that would go down to the moon and the reason for that is you need one person to still function operate pilot the command module so that you're able to come back to earth so they were always crews of three the pilot wouldn't be the person to walk on the moon that pilot would be the one to make it so that these two people weren't souvenirs permanent mementos on the moon so the lunar module itself was in two parts you'd land all together once you had landed on the moon done some exploration you'd climb back in and remember these walls are no thicker than three pieces of aluminum foil together thickness or thinness and then this blasts up and you rendezvous with your pilot so the timing has to be perfect for the pilot to catch and rendezvous this is why so much emphasis in the gemini program about the rendezvousing and then it's not over there you've got a quarter million miles to come back home and you've got a very small calculated window so that you don't come in too fast and skip along the earth's atmosphere and keep going you don't want to come in too shallow that you're going to burn up so it's a very very precise uh, piloting calculations that has to happen it's an enormous team so the Saturn V would get you out of Earth's gravitational pull and before you abandoned of course you would rendezvous with the capsule pull that out from the top stage of the Saturn and then uh, that would descend down to the moon the pilot would remain orbiting the moon and at the set time come and catch you as this part jettisoned upward so the pilot would be there and this could hold no more than two people and it really was standing room only so the command module three sardines packed in there and two would egress go to the moon all the knobs and buttons to operate the command service module i'll leave you with the task of memorizing all those buttons what does this one do? What does that do? Oh look, my famous navigation systems.